Hi, and welcome to Building Better Relationships with Angela and Patty. Hi, Patty. How are you? Good, Angela. How are you? I'm good. I'm ha- having some technical excitement, but I'm staying very <laughs> calm and composed. I don't know how to describe technical in- technical excitement because I'm I'm thinking about two things at the same time. It might be my binary code mind. So today we're we're looking at the topic uh, beyond comparison accepting oneself and I'm going to go into the binary mind about comparison later Um, but Patty um, maybe you can talk a little bit because you're good at remembering these things how did we come up with this topic and I'm going to try while you're describing how do we come up with this topic I'm going to try being binary minded and sharing this um, if I can find it to the uh, to the Facebook page Great. Well, after our last Facebook Live last month, we were talking a little bit and some things had come up about comparison. So we thought it was a good topic to talk about because um, with all of the different qualities that people have, sometimes comparing yourself to another can cause you to... um, you know, be sad because of others, you know, somebody else has something that you don't have and you want it and you think, oh, poor me, I don't have that. And just going from being, comparing yourself to somebody else to being joyful with what you have and to be happy um, and to live in the moment. So that's kind of how we got to where we are today with this podcast. Yeah. And one of the things I was also reflecting on was um, young people now grow up with social media and Instagram and images of things to compare themselves to. So it's like you're describing what goes on inside their mind, but their visual Um, bombardment every day of what they're comparing themselves to it's like very external as well and today we're going to look at that I've got a bit of a binary code going on of the inner and the outer but I'm going to look at how that operates at the mind level and um, Patty's also going to share that sense of going beyond comparison how do you connect to that inner self and work with self acceptance accepting oneself so can you share patty um what you had shared with me about the um way to start with going inside and accepting going by going internally right so accepting oneself for your good qualities you have um everyone is unique and has some type of talent or gift Comparing yourself to someone else, all it does is cause pain and envy. Being happy with what you have creates internal peace within. I believe if you don't love yourself, you can't love others the way you should, which causes you to compare yourself to others. You want what they have and you beat yourself up because of it. Instead of being satisfied with what you have and happy for them, having gratitude brings happiness and joy into our lives. When you are constantly down and wanting what somebody else has, you're not living in the moment. You are living with turmoil and you are not open to having what comes to you. Mm. So what you're saying about not open to what comes to you I'm going to talk about um, an exciting workshop later that I'm sharing to explore that Um, so I'm going to share what you're saying Patty about that comparison that we do when we don't have what that person has or we don't have what the social media is presenting or the perfect happy life that everybody is presenting on their social media pages or um, their financial (laughs) status that we don't have. (laughs) Um, I'm going to look at the comparative mind. And when we started the podcast today, I talked about the binary code. 
So there is a part of our brain that very much works like a binary code. It goes, it, it works in comparison and it's a part of the brain, it's a part of the mind. It, it's the way we are developed from birth. Uh, when we come out into the world, we understand what things are and what they are not. So there is actually a very good part of the comparative mind. It's a constructive part. It's what you know when something tastes salty or it doesn't taste salty or something is sugary and it's not salty. So that's a, it's built into our sensory system and it's built into the mind that starts to restore information. So what happens is there is a constructive part of the comparative mind and there's a destructive part of the comparative mind, which is what you're referring to, Patty, when we start to um, compare ourselves to others as as lacking something. So we're right. missing something. It's not creative and, oh, I'm comparing myself and I'm thinking, what can I use from that to build something? Rather, it's comparing yourself to an image and what am I missing? What am I lacking? So if you can see the two aspects of the comparative mind, it becomes very clear and it's actually a really good way to start seeing where am I using my mind in a destructive way versus where am I using my mind in a way to evaluate what is not exactly what I'm looking for and what I do like and what I can build on. So you're sharing, Patty, about going inside to feel the qualities if it's being happy and joyful. What are those things that you're happy about? So I'm going to talk more about that later. But Patty, you have a blog post and it's in the description. And I wanted to go to that blog post and ask you what is it in the blog post that um, helps people access um, that inner self-acceptance? Right. So what do people really want in life? Okay. I asked this question to numerous people and the answer that came was peace and love. How do you find peace and love in your life? I believe you can have peace and love and joy in your life when you reflect peace and love within yourself. So loving yourself will, you can love others. If you treat yourself good, you can treat others good. Mm. Um, you know, how do you stop those negative thoughts about yourself? Well, you begin by writing down all your good qualities about yourself. All of us have good qualities. And anytime you start to feel that self-doubt, you go back and you reflect on those words. You read them over again. And you perform this exercise and it'll open up your heart to know that you are a good person within you. You do have good qualities. And you, and you can look for the good qualities in others. Mm. Mm, that's an active exercise too. It's a meditation. <laughs> Maybe it would be yeah. the, the, the Christmas holiday meditation. It's like, look for the good, look for the good, look for the good. Look for the well, we're, we're look getting programmed to always look at negative in people, negative in ourselves, negative in others. And we really should be looking at the good in others instead of the bad. Mm. And that's one thing we've shared in a few podcasts that social media wires your brain in a destructive way comparatively. Yes. So if you're going to be watching social media a lot, you need something to build that constructive part of your mind or your heart. And you've got to have focus activities like you're sharing to find good qualities. Where is the good? Where is the good? How can I see the light in someone or in others? And mm -hmm. Patty, you also had another question for the audience about how to focus on the good qualities. Can you share that question? Yes. How do you want to show up? Do you want to bring joy when you walk into a room? Or do you want to bring something else? Yeah, you know what just came to mind? <laughs> I'm thinking yeah. of, um, you know, those relatives that you have to, 
put up with at the Christmas dinners or the holiday occasions and you think, oh, my God, I don't want to – do you want to be that relative? <laughs> you think of the really stressful relative. Do you want to be that person that everybody's not wanting to hang around with at the holiday <laughs> dinners or the holiday events? Um, right. Yeah, so I just got a really strong image. And for me, I'm a kinesthetic kind of person. So in my background, I used to be very socially awkward, but because I did theatre um, in my 20s to 30s and 30s, I would have to practice putting on a persona. So sometimes this stuff doesn't come naturally to you to be joyful as you walk in. But what I learned from theatre and performance is that I can wear an energy and I can feel it in my body and I walk into the room and it has an impact. What tends to happen with families is that we get stuck in some of the family dynamic and drama or old unresolved stuff. Um, so we've learned <laughs> in, the, in the building of the topic today, we had some funny stories about families because I think sometimes families... Um, like when you're saying, Patty, how do you want to show up when you walk into the room, if it's for a holiday event or if it's for a, um, a family event? What happens with, with families is that, is that sometimes before we go to the event, we've got some negative story already <laughs> about the family member or the dynamic. Right, or how, how, the, how the day is going to go or the evening is going to go and we all fit into a certain role that we play in the family dynamics. The role. And I was when I was younger, I used to really, I was not really into holidays with my family. So I had done some really destructive sort of coping mechanisms and I'd set up the anti-holiday party to cope with the family party. So I would um, have a very debauched Christmas with my friends after I had to do the family Christmas to try and cope with uh, all of the family stuff. Now, consequently, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but, and we're going to talk about some strategies. Um, so, yeah. Well, um, like an example that I can give one time, I drank like a whole bottle of wine while I was cooking dinner just to, <laughs> to try to cope. <laughs> it was sparkling, you know, uh, wine, but still I drank the whole bottle, which amazed me that I did that and I was able to cope. But it's sad that you feel or you don't realize that you're doing that to cope. Well, some might, with, some of the audience might think that's a good strategy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I think we've all, you know, all done, you know, those kind of things or use certain mechanisms to get us through whatever uncomfortable situation that we're anticipating or actually in. And I um, appreciated actually the anti-Christmas, like the, the post-family Christmas recovery parties. I actually had friends that were really like, come over, we'll do it, we'll do it, I'll fix you up, I'll look after you. So it was kind of nice in a way that I had a recovery party from the family dynamic. Uh, but, you know, as an older person, I want to get over resorting to alcohol to try to get over that. So, um, Patty, you've got some really good strategies for people who may be looking for a way of coping with the family dynamic in the holiday period. Can you share a couple of those or one of those? Yeah, I wrote a blog post last year, Survival Techniques for the Holiday Season. And one of the techniques that I, I put in there was, say you want to have a family get together. You can have a family, you can have the family get together and make it an open house and do it from like 10 to 3 so that People that want to come early and leave early and have other commitments can do that or vice versa, want to come later. And plus two, then it's kind of early for a lot of alcohol, which can cause um, a lot of different dynamics when there's a lot of alcohol involved. 
right. in the family parties. So do an open house, uh, make some punch and cookies. When people come in, come, you know, greet them. You can have fun because you're you're just making it a fun party, you know, uh, maybe have a game or something or something for them to find when they come, come into the house, make it fun. And the people that possibly don't like each other, they can feel free to come and go as they please. And you won't have a lot of family drama happening because this person's not talking to this person or this, you know, and there's not the alcohol involved that will set more triggers. Right. That's one of my suggestions. And you have the party. You don't have to have the party on the specific day, Christmas or New Year's or any other holiday that you're having. You're setting the day, you're setting the tone and, and you're going to enjoy yourself. Great. Yeah, I really <laughs> like that strategy because it's you're thinking ahead and you're planning for a situation and you're giving it a structured time so you're not feeling so trapped. Because I remember in the past when I was younger, I'd feel like, oh, my God, I have to go to this event, I have to go to this event. And I was, my mind was getting destructive, not thinking creatively. But that's what I'm talking about with that creativity and the, the way to look at a situation of how you can bring something to it, like the game. I like the game idea and how you can change the dynamic and, and actually create a dynamic in the situation. Because we all fall into a role and some people um, are the gossip. Some people are the judger. Some people, you know, and if you can eliminate that and make it fun and in um, light and not have people fall into those different roles. Yeah, that's really good. It's like getting people out of that old dynamic into something different for a day or for a short period of time. Stop the cycle of the criticizing of all of those different things and just enjoy one another. Awesome. <laughs> and um, I wanted to share also about how um, at this time of year as well, what happens is when we are wrapping up the end of the year, because we're doing this at December at the end of 2018, it's a very special time to look at the creative part of the comparative mind. So sometimes comparison is important at specific times of your life. And at the end of the year, it can be a very important tool for you to start using that mind to review your year. So I'm going to share um, a way to look at a couple of questions about how to use that comparative mind in a, in a joyful way but a constructive way. And so the tool is really, I call it about how far, it's called how far have you come and what is your more. At the beginning, Patty, you were saying that when you're in comparison, you're not, you're not open to the more. You're constantly like in a cycle. So these questions are a series of questions that will help evaluate. And if you need me to repeat the questions, you can just send me a message. But the first question is, who were you at the beginning of this year? So if you're comparing, who were you at the beginning of this year? You have a baseline. And then looking at yourself now, how are you different now? How are you different now from the beginning? And then the third question is, what have you achieved? So you look at yourself and say, what have you achieved? So from that third question what have you achieved ask yourself what are you happy about and then of course when you ask yourself what are you happy about you do have to consider what the comparative mind will do is usually bring up what you're not happy about so what you can do 
is those two things. It's important to do both. What are you happy about? What are you not happy about? Because the negative, destructive, comparative mind will usually throw up things that you're not happy about. So just acknowledge them if they're there. Don't push them away. Don't try to change them. Be, be frank and honest about it and avoid going into what you were saying at the beginning. We, we beat ourselves up. So if you start beating yourself up, up about it, that's not the point of this exercise. If you see that habit, you've got to really say, okay, that's a part of the destructive mind. So when you get to those four questions, what are you happy about that is the final one. The point is to look at what do you want more of? That's the fifth and final question. And that's where you start to build constructively with the comparative mind. You see where you were at the beginning of the year, where you are at the end of the year, what have you achieved, what are you happy about, what are you not happy about and where? what's your next and what do you want more of, especially for 2019. It's a year that's asking us to really open to that more. So those are the five questions and if, if you need me to repeat them, I can put them into the discussion on the Facebook but also just send me a message. And that also that more is what I'll be exploring through movement because sometimes, Patty, what I've discovered, if I'm not moving my body, I can get shut down into old habits really quick, like getting on the phone, getting to, you know, watching too much Netflix or whatever. So the movement that I teach is also about exploring how to shift energy, get out of stuck energies. And that's what I'm going to be sharing in the movement meditation on in Sydney this Friday, which is actually on solstice. So we'll, I will talk about the solstice event a bit more, but Patty, I just wanted your feedback on um, when people get stuck in comparative comparison and what do you have to share as ways they could get out of um, being stuck maybe in that critical self? Yeah, I mean, I think if you perform the exercise that I said earlier in here about, you know, writing down your good qualities, thinking about good qualities of others, just spending time thinking of the good, you know, love your family members for who they are, love their good, good points. All of us have good points and that will help you get through the holidays. Just knowing and thinking about what do I love about this person? Are they funny? Do they make you smile? Are they that person that walks into a room and they're joyful? How do you show up? Do you show up as negative, downer, or are you a loving person that people want to be around? What do you want to create in your life and open up your heart to have more? That's beautiful. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> and for those of you in Sydney, if you are listening in, during December 21st of 2018, um, that week, you can also join me to explore what more is in the body uh, this Friday the 21st. It's before the Christmas holiday, so it's a Christmas crazy weekend with lots of parties. But we're going to look at the sol summer solstice, which is in the southern hemisphere, about expanding into your more. Sometimes when we don't feel it, what more is in our life, we can get stuck. And if, if you find yourself getting stuck in the holiday season or the, uh, the time when you're around family members as well, what can you do to just open up your body or to shift, do exercise, go for a walk, move that energy so you don't end up staying stuck in maybe some old patterns that are ready to finish and let go of? Um, and if you're in looking at the description of the podcast, you can uh, check out the link for that event uh, for the summer solstice in Australia. So, Patty, um, you also have another program as well, the Work-Life Balance Program, which is also about measuring and, and evaluating what do you want more of and what do you want less <laughs> of in your life. Can you talk about the Work-Life Balance Program? Right. I have a 21 days um program that you get every day you get an 
instructable instructions email with oh you have a workbook to work towards you creating your balanced life everybody has different conceptions of what a balanced life is what's good for me may not be good for somebody else and you're continually always growing in this 21 day program you can use over and over again as your life changes or events change in your life to create balance in your life. It's very important that your life is not just about work and to have family and friends and hobbies and, and take a vacation and all of those things and not get consumed 24-7 by work. There is more to life than work. And some of us are, are very career oriented and take our work seriously. And then we ignore other parts of our lives. Work is important. It puts food on the table on all of those things, but you also have to have a little bit of balance for the other things in life that are truly, truly important. You're, family, your spouse, your children, or your animals, or whatever is important in your life. You also need to spend time with them. And what I loved about the program was that it did it got you to evaluate those different parts of your life, your relationships with your spouse, your relationship with your body, your sleep, mm -hmm. um, quiet time for self, your relationship with um, vacations or playtime and and you get to see well what am I actually building here what am I creating is this what I want so that right. constructive use of the comparative mind and it really gets you to see what you want more of and what perhaps you've been holding on to that's getting in the way of what you want more of so it's a really like you said Patty it's a program you can use again and again at different stages and cycles of your life yeah. Yes, because you you come you don't realize you're you're ignoring one aspect of your life and everything's focused on this this aspect of your life and it helps you kind of maneuver around what is important in your life and what do you want to maintain. Fantastic. <laughs> so we've um come to the end of the the podcast today so patty i just want to share a sense of hope for this coming year and a relief for the end of 2018 we did it we did we i know there's a few days to go still but i'm kind of already planting some seeds and i wish everyone a beautiful uh, resolution not a new year's one but a resolution of this year's energy for you so you can actually start to really create that next year from a place of true joy and happiness. Um, and Patty, can you just um, share what you were feeling for the people listening as well? Yes. I hope you all have a very wonderful Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays and a beautiful New Year in 2019. Love yourself, love your family, and be happy. And don't compare yourself with others. Love what you have and expand on it. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Patty. And Thank hopefully you, the new year we'll be bringing um, many more topics on this around this area of the expansion as well. We didn't get to talk about the butterfly and the lotus today because 